Welcome to LA Foodie. This is Drew and Ben, the food dudes. We're looking for the best eats in LA and usually finding them. On today's show, we taste test a tomato, dip into some Dupars, and booze it up at a bourbon distillery. Plus, Lisa shows us how to kick ourselves a can of homemade ice cream, care of Pinterest. So welcome to the backyard barbecue and grab a beer from the cooler, because there's all that and more coming up on LA Foodie. What's up, man? Well, the obvious <laughs> the obvious thing to notice here is that we've yeah. been away for a while. There hasn't been a new podcast in weeks. Um, so Where what's... have we been? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> well, yeah. first of all, obviously, we're in a different space. Yes, slightly different. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah. one thing that, that, that I've been up to, right. uh, moving to a new place to live, which... Uh, it, it's a great place. Got a nice little backyard, so we're going to be doing podcasts here now, which is going to be great. Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. Ben, you? Uh, me? Uh, I went to a bachelor party Ooh. in Louisville, Ooh. Kentucky. La la. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about la la, but uh, it was hot as balls. Okay. Like the whole time, it kind of that that part kind of sucked. I'm not gonna lie. Well, but was the it was it one of those weddings where they do they it was insist a party. on it was a oh okay not Just wedding at all no 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 so you didn't Just have to worry about photos or anything didn't have to worry about photos. you ever go to those weddings where it's like 109 degrees outside uh, and yes. because it was in the plan everyone insists on taking photos like in the sun yeah you I know, haven't been a part of one of the weddings like where you're wearing like 14 layers of no. gabardine anyway yeah not no, that not it wasn't like okay. that no we went to a bourbon distillery actually went to a Buffalo Trace Distillery okay which is in uh. Frankfurt, not not quite in Louisville. Okay, but uh, close, right? Yeah, yeah, relatively close, okay. like an hour away. And what's the uh, what's the capital of uh, Kentucky? Well, that would be Frankfurt. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so it's in the capital, kind of. And uh, basically, they make Blanton's uh, bourbon. They make a bunch of different. Uh, what is it called? Pappy Van Winkle is the most. I like the name of that. One. Yeah, Pappy Van Winkle, the twenty-three-year-old. Bourbon. Is this one of those ones that they put in a cellar and just leave it there to chill for well, they, 25 years? No, no, no. They don't put it in a cellar. They put it in these huge uh, buildings because they actually use the seasons of Kentucky. Okay. To and that affects season. the bourbon? Yeah, it affects okay. the bourbon. Because so does, does it affect when it the gets wood? Hot, yeah. It releases... When it gets hot, it goes can, into okay. the wood. That's the really barrels cool. themselves are charred on the inside. They have like very specific... Amount of time. It's like 55 seconds. They fire the blowtorch down into the barrel I've and they seen, charge it. I've seen them do that on TV. It's a, yeah. it's a flame in the floor and they put the barrel over it. Exactly. And, and cool. they have a very specific amount of times. It's 55 seconds. And they, so then when in summer months, the, uh, they put in, what they put in is actually clear liquid. Okay. And then it yeah, soaks yeah, yeah. into it's the a, wood. It's, a, it's a, just a yeah. distilled spirit right. that goes into a barrel. They call it White Dog. White Dog. White Dog. What and up, white then, dog? Uh, yeah, then in the, colder months it comes back out of the wood so right. it goes in and out in and out and that's so it gets darker with time but uh did you get tw- to, did you get to taste oh yeah they had they had some blantons they had some uh but you didn't get to try trace. old well, no, you don't get to try the Pappy famous Van. rheumatism Pappy, yeah. <laughs> Pappy Van Wiggles is like over a hundred something dollars a bottle you okay. can find it on eBay because they, you know, 23 years ago, they didn't realize anybody cared about bourbon. <laughs> yeah, right. They, and that's they the started this project. They were like, well, you know, maybe. Maybe somebody Someday. in Kentucky will maybe pay for this. <laughs> because what it, what it is is you put in 50 gallons, or like 52 gallons of white dog. 23 years later, you open up, there are 10 gallons left. Because all the water has evaporated over the years and the alcohol stays behind. Got it. So there's but so they, little at the, at the end of the process. Do they mix it with water? At all, or is it bottled that way? Mm, you know, because I know some it, of them they have to mix it a little bit yeah. to, to come to a specific. Uh, Was it specific with, gravity? When it's bourbon, you can only be a specific uh, alcohol, alcohol content. Yeah, it. it has to at certain points of the process. It's really, really complicated, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but it's pretty awesome. I would recommend taking a bourbon tour if you and you got to taste means. along the way, right? You get to taste at the end of it, right? I would not recommend tasting the white dog by itself because they have that as an option. That is moonshine. Yeah, have you <laughs> ever? Up, I've had moonshine is, before. That is that burns. The, have you? Is that the first moonshine? Oh yeah. Yeah, because yeah. in college there were some guys. This dude over here knows. There were some dudes <laughs> in college that would always show up to parties with moonshine. Uh, and so I definitely like there was there was these dudes that would bring a um, a watermelon full of moonshine. Okay. So All right. It was watermelon okay. moonshine. So you'd make right. watermelon wine and then. You would distill <laughs> the watermelon wine. Oh, it's wine. like that scene from Can't Hardly Wait that's only in the trailer with Jason Siegel in it. When he comes to the watermelon and then drops it because everybody swarms him. 
He's like, I've had this watermelon in the fridge for a year. But it's not even cut in scene. the movie. Cutscene, not Man, in the movie. In the trailer. It's a deep cut right there. For big fans of yeah, Can't Hardly big Wait. Big Can't Hardly Wait fans. That one was for you. Well, on that note, we <laughs> yeah. should probably meet today's guest. It's probably time to meet today's guest. It's the LA Foodie Podcast. <laughs> Our guest today is Jason Matucci, a.k.a. Weekend Foodie. What's happening, Jason? Yeah, what's going on? Oh, nothing much. Well, thank you guys for having me Thanks here. for coming on the show, man. Sure, yeah. Considering I just got to L.A. last year, uh-huh, this yeah. is kind of a thrill for me. All right, so what's the tagline of the site? I am considered the, weekend, the original Weekend Food Warrior. All right, what does that mean? Well, since I, since I work in video and photography, I can't do it all the time, so I figure I can get to it on the weekends right. and do it part-time. Excellent. So, okay. Time. Excellent. Excellent. All right, so... I do want to know, because this is, this is unprepared, I mean, on your part. I'm but, curious, just very, tell me the last restaurant that you ate at. So it could be, like, McDonald's, it could be, you know... Spago. Yeah. Yeah. The last... Anything. Last restaurant? Like, the last yeah. place that you got food. Was it a sandwich from... I went to the L.A. Street Food Fest la- yesterday. Okay. So okay. I ate about 20 restaurants. All right. All right. But what you haven't eaten... What? At, oh, at today? a restaurant. At a rest. No, I haven't eaten a restaurant today. My last restaurant was called Story Tavern. Oh. In Burbank. All right. Okay. All right. Which was which was good. The beer was fantastic. The food they're still trying to get a hold of. I kind of feel okay. like there's a <laughs> handful of gastro pubs around town where that's sort of the deal. I mean, because it's pretty easy to have fantastic beer right, right now. Right, because there's just a bunch of awesome beer Yeah, there's a bunch of awesome there. beer. Well, what did you like best at the food fest? We, we were hearing some about this on social media. We got know? invited to it. We decided not to go because it's basically just uh, the convergence of the food trucks again, mm, right. which is actually can be fun. But, but it can be kind of a clusterfuck, yeah, let's be honest. Yeah, it can also be a yeah. total clusterfuck, which we've been to enough of those to kind of be gun-shy about them. So, right. so how, did you, how did this thing go off? Well, this was, this was my first one, so I was kind of excited. You know, 100 food trucks in one place is fantastic. Mm. I got the VIP package, and the first two places I went ran out of food. Okay. Uh, see, so yeah, that's always a problem with these things. So hang on, wait, 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 wait. What? Uh, what's the the waffle with the chicken and cheese? Oh, oh right. Ross, uh, no, no, Roscoe's. Roscoe's. Not, not Roscoe's. Roscoe's. The the grilled cheese truck. You're the grilled cheese about. truck. Oh, the grilled were they cheese there? Truck. They, I did not see them. Oh, okay. okay. All right. I did not. I, I, <laughs> I'm just curious they if they were serving <laughs> their thing. Sometimes on waffle when Wednesdays, they, ran out. Well, so they would run out. Yeah. It was a little disappointing because yeah. I went. I'm standing in line. I'm I'm next. We're sorry. We're gonna take like ten minutes. Went to the next place. Sorry, we're gonna take ten minutes. And it was just. For me, it was just a little disappointing. But once I got the rhythm going and figured you have to eat in line when you're going to the next place, everything was fantastic. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, like, if you, that's the secret then. Is that, that is the secret. Go yeah. to the first place. you gotta, you got to wait it out at the first place. Yeah. Yes. But immediately get your food. And then immediately go stand in the next line. Yes, and because the line repeat, because the right? lines are the lines are huge. And I went on the time for the VIPs, which were only fifteen hundred people. Oh. At five o'clock, it opened up to five thousand more. And they were still running out? And Well, they were running in bands, and I, I left at five. I was full <laughs> gotcha. after 20 places and some alcohol. <laughs> How much more is the VIP than? The... It, was, it was 70 versus 50. Yeah. Okay. Worth well, that's, it? That's it was, probably, it was worth right? it because I'm not a huge crowd fan. Yeah, yeah see, that's the, lines. the thing. I just... How long were the lines when you were waiting in them? Uh, 10 minutes. Okay, well, that's not bad. So the VIP... That's actually not that bad. So the VIP mm-hmm. is probably worth it if yeah, you don't want to stand around, if you don't have that kind of stamina. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I just went to Comic Con, which we'll talk about next time, but that requires a lot of standing in line. Yeah, Probably not going to be a two and a half hour line, two day line. Well, yeah. the funny thing was, everyone there with the camera had a media badge. Uh, you know, people with right. iPhones, yeah. people with actual cameras. Right. <laughs> and I'm thinking, how easy was it to get a media pass to this thing? I can tell you, as a blogger, not very hard. I mean, there are really only a few events. Comic Con's one of them that has pretty strict rules about bloggers. Sure, um, but most <laughs> events are just yeah. like, yeah, publicity. Come on in. It is right. not a tough well, thing ne- to obtain. Next year I'll do that. Once I get my my site more established, yeah, then I'll start to apply for passes. So okay, sure. so did you try anything there that you had never ever tried before? I had cow brains, and you'd Ooh. never done that before. I've never had brains. And what did you think? Ve- it was. It was chewy and it disintegrated in my mouth. Well, how was it prepared? What was the tacos? It was, it was in a some sort of I don't remember. It was a curry type of sauce. Okay. It was just a piece and a it was a piece and a sauce. No. It didn't really taste funky or anything. Where was we it just from? tasted the sauce. I can't remember off the top of my head. No. I mean, it's some sort of I, I can't remember. It's hard. I those mean, places. Yeah. There's a million different places. It's hard I'm to keep sure the you brand can, you'll see the pictures on my site. That's okay. fine. We'll find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll put it up on the yeah. site. Yeah, yeah. Um, exactly. Because I've tried brain once. 
and it was at Ford's Felling Station mm-hmm. in Culver City. I, we did the whole pig feast. Oh right, and that's uh, fantastic. Well, did they? Was he serving brain at the KCRW event that we went to? I feel like he was, but maybe we didn't get any. It's possible. I don't, I don't remember, yeah. remember exactly, but I do remember the Ford's Filling Station experience, mm-hmm. and it tasted metallic. Did you well, get that? There, there was so much sauce on top of it. Okay. I couldn't taste so anything but sauce. You got to be like, I tasted brain, and I, I it, ate brain, but maybe I didn't think taste it, it. I think you know, there was a couple places. There was, there was the place with the cow brain, and then there was a place with the beef tongue curry. Did now, you try I that? Think, I think that, was, that did not taste like beef tongue whatsoever. But and there was no pieces of tongue in there. It was just it was just more of the the curry sauce. Okay. But I think it was more that those two booths were more about shock factor. I yeah. It. And either you had adventurous people that wanted to try it, mm-hmm. or the people are just like, no bueno. They yeah. Moved I on. mean, curry is such a strong flavor that I mean, you can really kind of overpower. Like if you have a piece of brain in there that you might taste the kind of thing you're talking about, the metallic taste. Yeah. I think a curry would probably drown that out. I think that's the purpose of a curry. Yeah. <laughs> I think the curry developed <laughs> like, many years ago. Right. Let's just, just put the curry on top. Like that. Throw a curry yeah. on. That would be fantastic. Uh, exactly. I think that's, exactly. Yeah. What's your favorite color? It, it, it <laughs> might be yeah. part, of the, part of the issue. The last uh, brand new thing I ate was a cherimoya, which is a fruit. Oh, right. It kind yeah, of yeah. looks like a pear. It's greenish. Yeah. It has pock marks all over, large pock oh, marks. I've um, seen those. They, it's sometimes called ice cream fruit. Yeah, I've and seen, I've seen those. Spoon. Yeah. What yeah. you do is you let it get very ripe. It ripens after mm-hmm. you pick it, and you leave it on a windowsill or in a bag. I don't know if it ripens with methane. I'm not prepared no with idea. that information, Ben. <laughs> you don't have the science Damn behind you. it? But as it ripens, uh, you're supposed to let it go until it's almost tipped over is when it's best right like just like where it starts to kind of start to smell wrong like you just let it stray just into rotten territory and then you chill it and split it and eat it with a spoon i hated it (laughs) hold on i I, 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 I was not a big fan of it (laughs) yeah It's fucking disgusting. It was. I don't think and it was disgusting. And at the farmer's market, the guy is like, oh, you're going to... And he sat there and talked it up for <laughs> he, 10 minutes. I was like, did. well, give me two. You know, there's different types. I want to try a different type. I want to give it a shot because, like, how could he be so off base? I think if we there are different types... We both houses, it was bad. Yeah. Different types. I So there's two types. Terrible <laughs> and good. Nice. And apparently we got the we wrong one. We had a terrible one. one. Uh, have you ever tried durian? No. I never have. Um, there, I've tweeted out... Ranch 99, I know, carries durian fruit. Frozen. So I've heard people tell me there's a, there's a farmer's market in Pasadena that has durian. Or is it called 99 Ranch? And anyway, it's an Asian market. Yeah, it's an okay. Asian market. It's the most disgusting thing, smell in the world. Have you apparently. tried it? Not yet. Okay. I'm just dying to get out there. We should do yeah. durian fruit on the show because okay. yeah. people have very strong opinion. Apparently, it smells like yeah. carrion, like rotting flesh. Oh, that sounds but great. But it tastes sweet. So, like, you have to well, be able to get past the stink. I don't know. Is this what you think well, like that, a vulture's <clears throat> daily life is like? They're like, dude, I know. I know. It's <laughs> rotting. It sucks. But when you taste it, it is yeah. so sweet. It is really good. And then you his buddy's just just like, Arr. yeah. <laughs> it's like, I know. I hear you. I know. <laughs> well, I, I think that's my philosophy on food. Anytime I talk to someone who says they're a foodie, my first thing is, would you try this? Would you try that? Yeah, you got to be adventurous. Yeah, if you got to be adventurous. Yeah. And if it's a no, have you tried it before? Okay. If you tried it and say no, okay, I can give you that. But if you consider yourself a foodie and you don't want to try it because of one thing or another, then it kind of just, I think it defeats the purpose. Totally so, agree. And if Yo Gabba Gabba taught us anything, yeah. it's <laughs> try it, you're going to like it. It's probably true, yeah. Uh, you know, we asked, we asked Twitter for some questions. Yeah. And I got we got a couple. One. You got to do the All first right. one? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, uh, so, Twitter follower What's Good says, what's the weirdest food he eats on a daily, weekly basis? That's for you. On a hold on, so I daily weekly slash weekly yeah. basis. <laughs> so, do you have a weird food that you like and eat no, regular? on no, the there, regular? There's nothing. There's nothing very weird. I. I what I, would you say? I guess is it's a, a sliding scale. All the time. Like how weird is toast? Like not very that is weird. A zero on the weird scale. So okay, I'm, cali- <laughs> that's, I'm calibrating that's, that's the, the scale, calibration. Then. It's a zero. Yeah. Okay. Toast and uh, one hundred is human flesh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> Eggs oh, would be like what? Yeah. A, a ten? The what? What is a ten? Like chicken eggs? Chicken My, eggs? Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. It's a tenth. A All little, I'm trying to establish a, here is that eggs are weirder than toast. Yeah. So we don't. We haven't. We don't know what at what's good. 
mean specifically by weird. Their definition of weird my, could differ. Your definition of weird. What's the weirdest thing that you eat on the regular? <laughs> my my diet during the week is fairly healthy. Okay. So, I, so I'm able to we- eat weird on the weekends. Right. Sure. So the weirdest thing I have is as a prosciutto. I mean, that's not that's not too terribly weird. Oh, God. Weird. It's so weird. It's a 13. I, yeah, I know. The weirdest thing, the weirdest it. things, the weirdest things I've had are like tongue, brains, and yeah, testings. Yeah, You know, on on the weekends, you know, it's fair game. And it's, I don't know. No. Do you, what's weirder, prosciutto or hummus? Hummus is not fair. What if weird? I say? What if I call it hummus? No, it's just all. Uh, That's you just, just put a bunch of you put a bunch of little things in a blender and you blend it up. It's Look, done. I, I'm not saying that it's difficult to make. I'm saying <laughs> that if you polled 10,000 people... We're on the cooking portion now? I'm saying most of the stuff that you're going to put in the weird uh, scale is under a 20. All right. Yeah, most of the stuff Can you're talking about. Can we move on to the next yeah, question? Yeah, let's move on to the next question. <laughs> next question uh, uh, is from uh, the Arthritis Monologues. It's actually for all of us. Arthritis okay. Monologues. Arthritis Monologues. Nice. Her, like uh, at Arthritis Monologues. 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 At Ellie Foodie. Hi there. Help. I'm eating meat after a decade of vegetarianism and have no clue where to start on my meaty L.A. journey. Suggestions? Okay. All I say is good for you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, welcome back or Sorry, to the club. Sorry, I don't mean club. to be like anti-vegetarian or anything. I'm not I necessarily it. anti-vegetarian. Totally cool. I'm not do. at all. You yeah. know, we've talked about this on the show before. Yeah. It's just my They're only problem. Things. My only problem with vegan and vegetarian food, my only problem yeah. is when it masquerades as something else. Yeah, and then I'm just yeah. like, "Fuck you, fake hamburger, or whatever you're trying to be. Yeah. You're not yeah. that. like embrace what you are." That's what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm with you. I would say get a reacquaint, reacquainted with bacon. I think ba- yeah. well, that bacon. Well, that is a just goddamn. Yeah. Is that Bacon's what you everywhere. start with? That well, is you, harsh. Where do you want to go with the bacon? It's Although harsh. I mean, I got a harsh start. I maybe it's my first thought jokingly was Brazilian churrasco. I have to say. <laughs> like, so all the just meat, eat it. everything immediately, True. and just die. <laughs> you would like die. you would be so sick. I'm, 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 I'm do sorry. That. Bacon is the miracle animal, in my opinion. Yeah, it is, it's just so. Bacon is a miracle animal by yes, it, itself. Yes, bacon it is, is it, the friendliest and most own, magical of animals. Bacon is its own food group. It goes well with right. everything. I've seen it on ice cream. I've seen it's it. True. You're wrapped around chicken. I mean, bacon. If you want to start slow, I'd say chicken. That's a good slow. Well, where do you, you know what? Everything else. You where know do you how go? street racers skip from first gear, uh, first gear to third gear. Yeah, and they're yeah. just like fuck second gear. I don't right. have time for that. <laughs> sure, right. Skip yeah. chicken. Chicken is second gear. Oh, so damn. It, conflicting opinions. Here. I say, okay. go for a, a piece of beef cooked medium. Yeah. Okay. Where? where where should you go is the real question. Oh, sure. Well, yeah. Um, she lives in Los Angeles. She wants to go to a restaurant and have a great piece oh, of meat. Okay. Where's she going? Can I change my answer? Yes. Okay. Uh, a, uh, a a beef French dip with blue cheese oh. at Felipe's. Okay. That's Felipe's yeah. classic. Yeah. Yeah. Once you started that, that's what I was thinking too. Yeah. 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 That, okay. That's a good French dip. Hmm. Okay. Ben? Okay. I'm inclined to say Billingsley's because I love that place. It's an old man steakhouse. Yeah, it's no, great. I, w- I wouldn't go to Billingsley's. But it's first not off. the greatest no, beef. You want right? you want something that yeah really, like I don't know where the best steakhouse is in town. I've eaten at a couple Musso steakhouses. And Frank, and nothing really they say blew me away. I I've know, never gotta, been. Gotta, gotta it's embarrassing. Frank's, I know. Have you been? What the hell's wrong with us? Not, not yet. Oh dear I'm God! This is just this whole. We should and, shut it down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and shut it down, people. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. I don't know. I mean, Do you have a choice, Jason? If you're just if you're just if you're just starting out, you want to start with something, you know, on, on a starter course. I would suggest go anywhere in Burbank because that's like bland starter course. <laughs> but no, you want to have a little flavor. You want to yeah, be like but, welcome back. Yeah, you don't want to like you know you don't want to you that, don't want to. But you you poo pooed my bacon theory. So I that, know your bacon theory. theory. No, that's yeah. a, that's a wel- good, that's a welcome I'm just saying, like that's a welcome back you know. with a cigarette afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. I'm just saying, like you know. Kiss her a little bit, you know. Tell her, tell her she's pretty. <laughs> you know what? Don't All right. go straight for bacon. I got, I got two. I got two <laughs> answers. If you're gonna go for a burger, you can. You could do worse than Father's Office. You know, you could probably. That's a. It's a good burger. That is a good starter burger. It's a good starter burger. It's got some interesting stuff on it that if you've it been a meteor in the, the past, shit out you of might you not though, remember. That burger is it's true, red. but those caramelized... Yeah, well, that's true. It is really red. And they will not cook it. No, they will that. not they do will anything that you want you to do to that burger. Yeah. I, actually, I, I, know, I, know, I know a great place that has, you know, some ve- vegetarian options as well as meat. Uh, a buddy of mine just opened a restaurant called Kitchen Fair. Okay. It has vegetarian options. It has pulled pork. Uh, okay. Turkey 
and fish. All right. So, so you, you're you recommending Kitchen Fair. I am recommending Kitchen right. Fair. So you can kick off the training wheels while you're in the restaurant. Exactly. You can say, you know what? Let, I'm going to start with... Start veggie. Start yeah. veggie and then work in. your way through the, all the sandwiches and sides. How about this? So one more ease in option I got for you, though. Okay. If you want to do bacon, you could do... Like the Brussels sprouts Bam, of Freddy that's Smalls. What I was just gonna say. Yeah, you do the Brussels sprouts at like Freddy Smalls. Yep. It's a good place. You get some bacony goodness yeah. on the vegetables. It's on the vegetables, and then and there's you're chunks like, of bacon. Look how well everyone plays together. Yeah, and then that <laughs> chunk of bacon is delicious. Yeah. So that's not a bad starter step. And okay. uh, all right, Kitchen Fair also a good starter step. Kitchen okay, Fair downtown LA. Downtown. It, it's a good lunch. It, yeah. it doesn't get you full. It's just perfect amount of food too. Okay, I think uh, everybody. That means it's about time for everybody's favorite game with a new twist. What did we put in your mouth? What did we put in your mouth is the game where we blindfold our guest, give him a couple of hints, and then have him guess what we put in his mouth. <laughs> That's right, Jason. Once time begins, Lisa, you want to come do the blindfold? Once time begins, you'll have one minute during which you can sample the item and ask us yes or no questions. Today, you'll be eating tomatoes. You don't need to tell us where they're from or what they are as a reminder... They are tomatoes. They're tomatoes. But let's see if you can tell the difference between a supermarket tomato from Vaughn's and a fresh one from our friends at Farmscape. Let's get these tomatoes All ready. All right, should we get started? Yeah. All right, Jason, I'm going to give you the first. So which which are the two that are totally similar? Just point. Just point. It's this and this, these. This one and this one, right? Yeah. This right. one and this one. Right. So let's this start. This one and this one. With this one. I feel really weird with without handcuffs this on. This one. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's start with this one. Okay. This one right here? Yeah, I think okay. that's the one to start with. Okay. Jason, put out your hand, please. Okay. Your 60 seconds begins now. Taste the tomato. Okay. When you're finished, just drop it on the ground. Just drop it on the ground. Just we don't have time, dude. Just drop it. <laughs> here is the other tomato. Do you have any questions about this tomato? Would you like to ask questions? Yes or no? Is it yes a or no tomato? questions? It, it is it's a tomato. Yes. Yes. It's tomato. Yes. Look about that. Okay. Do Ready? you want to taste okay. the other one? Go. Please. No here other questions? Here's no other the other questions. tomato. Just drop it and go, dude. Drop it and go. <laughs> oh, shit. And what do you think? Which one is from Vons? And which one is from Farmscape? I'm going to say the second one is the Farmscape one. Okay. Why do you say that? It just, it just, it tastes, it tastes, well, the first one was colder. Okay. So it just, it just seems like it came out. It just came, it came out from like a colder nation. It came like, yes. Sure. Finland. Yeah. Mexico, right? fantastic. Yeah. Totally cold. Yes. Yeah. But all in all, apparently my palate is not that sophisticated, so I can't tell a huge difference. So, so I would say the second one. You the second think one. the second one was the farmscape? I say the second one was the farmscape. And that is absolutely, absolutely correct. correct. Congratulations. Oh, thank God. So, yes. <laughs> all right, blindfold comes off. <laughs> so they're not going to yes. beat me up afterwards? <laughs> no, no, no. You won't God, I was so up, hoping you know, you'd yeah, get no. that wrong. That would have made for an interesting <laughs> show. But you got it right, so yes. like it was obvious. Are you, or was that was it tough? No, actually... You know, something picked. I think something picked right out of a garden is has a little different texture than sure. something that's been sitting around in in a store for a while. Okay. So. So was it like? Well, I'm, it can I can I go? Is well, it, let's is this legal? Uh, well, let's can invite our friends here? over from Farmscape here. Come on, we'll in, guys. talk a little bit here. Let me borrow your mic here, Jason. All right. Here, uh, Weston. Weston, right from Farmscape, and uh, you Jesse, right. There, you, can you guys can all stand over here. So, uh, Good idea. why don't you tell us a little bit about what what we're eating here? Um, yeah, so today we've got a bunch of uh, tomatoes that I grew in my garden. So uh, our company, Farmscape, installs and maintains vegetable gardens at people's houses. Um, obviously, we have gardens ourselves. Or we okay, so mm -hmm. if, I'm going, if I'm doing a tomato crawl, uh -huh. where do I start? I think the biggest difference that anyone will ever notice um, is if you try this guy right here. It's okay. called the Sun Gold. Okay, um, just pop it in there, whole, yeah, whole there. freaking yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. Right. feel free. Uh, pull the, you know, the little green part off if you grab yeah, one. Yeah. It's more ripe. Um, Mm. Good lord, mm -hmm. that's delicious. Yeah, so that's awesome. Um, they, seem, they seem a lot more intense from the garden. Well, they taste yeah. like really tomatoey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and this particular varietal has like a ton of sugar. Um, yeah, so Very there's sweet. Uh, there's a measurement called bricks. They also use it in making wine, where you can take like test that percentage of the fruit that actually is like mm -hmm. liquid sucrose. Thank you. Um, and these continually rate higher than most other tomatoes. Okay, so, what's um, next? Why don't we do the same thing that he just did? Okay. We can try this greenhouse, like hothouse. Oh, okay. Tomato. Yeah. Um, so this is the one from the supermarket from Bonds right, down right. the street. So these are these are actually grown hydroponically up in greenhouses in Carpinteria, which is okay. in Santa Barbara. Okay. 
Um, I mean, it tastes like every tomato you've had grown up, right? Pretty much, yeah. They're fine. Um, yeah. Yeah. A little boring. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then uh, we can have our, our version of this. So everyone, uh, yeah, this is called an early girls of varietal. Okay. Really common gardening tomato. Um, we call them boring red tomatoes because, like, frankly, we're interested <laughs> in some, some, like, more interesting. Is this the kind of stuff thing? that you'd get, sure. like, in an envelope of seeds or something like that? You can get all these in envelopes. Oh, okay. But all this right. is, uh, a lot of people are, are accustomed mm. to what they eat at the grocery store, and so we, uh, you know, that, we grow that option yeah. for them. So, I mean, it's just, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. It's better. I don't I, I can't quantify this yeah, stuff, I mean, but it's, like it's, it's little, clearly better. It's a little yeah. tartar. It's got a little more, uh, like, sugar it's in it. Flavor. It's flavor. Yeah, it just has you more know, flavor to it. what it's, it's like, if that tomato tasted okay. <laughs> yeah. But it's just not a particularly <laughs> good exactly. tomato. Exactly. It's, yeah. like, not a great tomato. Like, I wouldn't. I would put that on a sandwich every single time, right. unless I had access to any other. Well, so, what's your right. favorite on this plate, <laughs> platter here? I, I want to know. My my personal favorite is this one here. It's called an orange flesh purple smudge. Ooh, all right, um, let's try this. The ones that are growing in my garden don't actually grow orange; they grow more red. Uh, oh, but they've okay. got like a purple smudge at the top. I wish I had a whole one to show you guys. Whoa. But, um, mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this is oh, wow. um, commonly referred to wow. as like a black tomato or a purple mm-hmm. tomato. So they've got like kind of like a little nuttier flavor. Um, yeah. They're you deadly. Talk about where by they're the from, Jesse? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so very we've all po- got 10 minutes to very live. Very poisonous. But, I mean, you know, it was worth it, right? <laughs> sorry, sorry, Jesse, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, so the, the purple tomatoes, uh, I'm told by, by research, is uh, they, they all have their origins in, in the former Soviet Union uh, around oh. the Crimean, Crimean Peninsula of the, I don't know, is it the Black Sea? Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, I'm not sure exactly why all black tomatoes come from there, but they, they do, and they have a, a totally different taste profile than, than your red tomatoes, certainly, and then even orange or, or green or, or any other color. All the purple and black style tomatoes, they have a lot of what I think is umami. Mm-hmm. You know, that, mm-hmm. Yeah. That sixth taste. That's true, they actually. Yeah. Savory. Yeah. yeah. Which is mm-hmm. different than uh, than your average water globe tomato, which is pretty mealy. and Yeah. yeah. Well, these are, so this is gold metal. This is like all flesh. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. these are, these are not quite as juicy and they're, um. Yummy. Yeah, I've been yummy. Call the words yummy that you're yeah. looking for. Uh, so they're called gold medal because they won a bunch of uh, awards, like right when the varietal first came out. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. In like the mid uh, 20th century. So. Uh, Ironically, yeah. mostly mm-hmm. silvers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go figure. You know? uh, um, so is are the super sweet 100s really super super it's sweet? Like a, is that going to be a thing? <laughs> no, I think they'll be yeah. sweeter. It's like a normal tomato, but a little mm-hmm. bit longer. If, <laughs> It's very slim. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I think they're a little they're a little sweeter than the cherries you get at the store or something, but um, I don't think they're quite as sweet as the sun golds. And, no, and one no, major yeah. reason that all these tomatoes yeah. taste a little bit sweeter uh, than stuff you get at the store is because tomatoes that are grown um, commercially are grown to like look great three weeks later when you're buying them. Right. right? So right. they're almost all picked when they're totally green. They put them in those, uh, you know, like the containers you see on trains or, or container right. chips or whatever, and they pump in uh, a gas to artificially ripen them. Right. Um, so a lot of the things, that, like the sugars that are in there that would normally convert, in, or like the chemicals that would convert into sugar, don't. Um, right. And they're made to be super tough for transportation, mm-hmm. like that kind mm-hmm. of thing. Where they're and not, safe yeah. to say that we can give that an L.A. foodie, fuck those tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> I spelled backwards trying to fuck those tomatoes. Uh, fuck those tomatoes. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. No, these tomatoes, fantastic. So why don't you tell it us a little is, bit so about... That, that's, I, I did want to comment yeah. on that, though, because that's it, it's crazy to me that that's kind of the model, the supermarket model, yeah. is yeah. let's make sure that these look okay on the shelf. Does, does everybody forget that where they bought their tomatoes after they get home? I don't under... I've never understood that, because for me, yeah. all it took was buying supermarket tomatoes like a couple times... And then buying tomatoes from a farmer or like anywhere right. else if yeah. you have that opportunity. Right. I just, I don't, I seriously don't get it. Yeah. It's like. I mean, they still, I mean, clearly they're selling them. It's just, there's just like a there, pyramid but, of uh, turds in the middle of the grocery store. Right. <laughs> right. More right. turds, I guess. <laughs> um, and then the last, last tomato we got here is called Cherokee Purple. Um, mm. Another old heirloom varietal. It's really popular. Nice. Uh, kind of similar to that orange flesh purple smudge. It's a little tart. So yeah. Nice. A little savory. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, why don't you guys tell us a little bit about mm. uh, Farmscape? That takes that tastes smoky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should have a little bit of a smoky flavor. The purple, t- I, I just love purple tomatoes. They have uh, so much more of a unique flavor profile. Absolutely. Sometimes, yeah. like some of They're them, like, the good Cherokees for sure. Yeah. Uh, taste enough like uh, like meat that I feel like they could be the main component of a sandwich. Yeah. I'm oh, going yeah. to have a tomato yeah. sandwich. Like, there's a reasonable thing to say with the with the Cherokee. 
Uh, so Farmscape's excited to grow stuff like this. Um, we, we basically, we set up and maintain uh, micro farms, like small urban farms in people's yards. Okay. Right. Uh, and we'll grow them anything that they might request, but we have a lot of recommendations for what does well in the Los Angeles climate. So what are some examples? Um, well, Weston, what does best? He's our head farmer. Okay. Um, okay. So we're lucky enough to live in Los Angeles for yeah. a Mediterranean climate. We can grow year-round here. Yeah. Um, right now, we're in, like, the height of production in the summer. So tomatoes, cucumbers, squash, peppers, um, egg, oh, plant, right, beans. These peppers. Yeah, and we got a little story behind Oh, what, so what's happening right, here? Say these for a second. Uh, All right, hang on. I don't want to jump ahead. And then in ahead. the winter, you can grow a lot of, um, like, the root crops, beets, carrots, radishes, um, like lettuces, kale, all that stuff, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage. Okay, um, so anything that I, any vegetable that I can think of is yeah, what you're saying. Yeah, and, right. so, and almost any fruit too. My so. question, I guess, is more for somebody that might be getting started or somebody who feels like their thumb is miles from green. Mm-hmm. Is there something that thrives, particularly in this climate, that's kind of hard to fuck up? Um, Radish. Lettuce, radishes and lettuce okay. in the winter. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, radishes are nice because from from seed to like full size radish, it's like three or four weeks oh, if they're in okay. good time oh, getting better. And you can go and buy a pot, buy some potting soil, like organic potting soil from your nursery. Throw it in your balcony. Wants like six or eight hours of sun. Everything wants more sun than you think it does. Right. Uh, plant them in there. There's spacings on the packet. Water it every day or two. You know, feel the soil to make sure it's moist, but not like sopping wet. Yeah. Okay. Three weeks later, you have a bunch of radishes. That's awesome so, advice, yeah. especially for apartment dwellers. And I mean, I can speak from experience, having lived in impossibly small places throughout my yeah. life. <laughs> that it, there's something that happens when you have plants around, and especially when you're growing food. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's something that you could do as a weekend project with very little space. That sounds yeah. awesome. Grow and, some and radishes, people. <laughs> They're awesomely easy. Yeah. 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 Let, let us too, frankly. And so uh, you just want to make sure you have enough sun, use decent soil. Uh-huh. So just go to like, you know, it's like a dollar or two difference between really like crap soil and really good soil. Okay. So just spend the extra dollar or two. What if you wanted to grow some of these tomatoes at your apartment? Could you do that? Yes. So if you want to grow tomatoes in an apartment, yeah. uh, you want your balcony to either be south facing or west facing. Obviously, oh, that's not okay. something you have control over once right. you're in there. Okay. Um, so the sun is on the southern horizon, and then, like, you, the west, that's where the sun sets, so you get more intense sun in the afternoon than you do oh, okay. in the morning. Um, again, you want to have, like, a larger pot, like, probably five or five or ten-gallon-sized pot. Mm-hmm. Bigger than you think you want. Right. The okay. Bigger, um, bigger the better. High-quality potting the soil, okay. and you might want to buy a bag of, like, high-quality organic compost and get it okay. from the nursery. Um, again, you're talking probably, like, six or eight dollars per bag for both of those. Okay. Uh, plant one tomato plant in the center. And make sure you water it probably once a day and every other day. You can dig down six or eight inches and squeeze the soil, and it wants to feel. You want it to feel like a damp sponge, so oh, not, okay. you don't want water to drip out, and you don't want it to be too dry. Um, yeah, and then buy a cage. That sounds kind of fun. Six yeah. or eight inches is not shallow. Like that's yeah, yeah you got to get in there. Yeah, yeah. 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 got to get in there. <laughs> don't do that on your way to the car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, do the. Ooh, well, yeah. Cause you, I'm just saying, if you're if you're on your way out the door to work. You're gonna to have to go back inside. Yes, to watch it. absolutely. <laughs> yeah, you without, keep, without, a, without a doubt. Keep yeah. some wipes in the front seat. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> right. Sure. Or, or that's how you shake hands with your boss. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry about the pot hey, soil, up, dude. Yeah, you know, growing uh, tomatoes. That's what's up. Uh, and, and I would recommend growing cherries if you're growing on a balcony. Um, okay. You can do better okay. with some of the larger varietals, but the cherries are little a little guys. more forgiving if you forget to water or you overwater. Okay. So, um, so what's the deal with these peppers? Okay. Um, so I love hot peppers. I yeah. love peppers of all kinds. Okay. Um, this is a varietal called Padron. Okay. It's Spanish. Right. Um, they eat them. It's a really common tapas appetizer there. Okay. Um, one in ten are spicy, so it's Ooh. great if you have a dinner party. You, uh, I just saw take these up All with right. a little olive oil and salt. Are you okay. getting um, on this, Nick? Who is going to try Lisa? Nick? You want to come in here, Nick, Lisa? Yeah. So you got people hanging uh, off on the get, sides here. You get everyone here. around right, the table. I'm going to do it. Everybody's going to try yeah. a Russian roulette pepper. It's a great party trick. See right, who gets a hot one. Here we go. The Padron pepper, right? Padron pepper, yeah. yeah. Here we go. How hot are we talking? Just eat it. It's not so bad. Mm. Mm. Tasty. Wow. Did Nick get the hot one? Yeah. Oh, mine's kind of hot. No. Is it really if, hot? If it was hot, you would. I would know <laughs> way more than this. Okay. I wasn't going to tell you. When they're hot, they're hot. So. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's got a little a little bit of spice to it, but I mean, it's a it's super small amount. But uh, All right. All right, so nobody nobody got the bad one. You still going? <laughs> yeah, I do this like three times a week. <laughs> so, you got a mine for the bad one. There, all right. There we go. That's it. Did you hit it? You got one? Let <laughs> <laughs> me get, get you a beer. All right. <laughs> all right, I'm getting. Uh, well, that <laughs> may mean it's. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that may mean it's time for the next segment, guys. <laughs>
Oh my God, it leads us into, oh my God, you guys are gonna be so excited. It's time for free samples with pie. Yeah. <laughs> free samples with, with pie! pie. part of the show where we sample a food or drink and review it right on the spot. Before we get to the pies, right. I know I promised pies, we're going to try a little hot sauce. Uh, so Jason, you brought us a little Gindo's Spice of Life. What's the story? A uh, buddy of mine makes this awesome hot sauce. Okay. We call him Gindo. All right. It's, red, it's, just, it's a red pepper sauce. Everything's local. Okay. Nothing's frozen. Everything's fresh. So straight to bottle. Well, I, I can to, tell uh, it's not frozen. <laughs> Be, no, it's not here. Yeah, I would Sorry, I would suggest some I would suggest some uh, guac with it a little bit. Okay. Guacamole on a corn chip. What is this called? It's called Gindo's Spice Gindo's. of Life. Gindo's Spice. Gindo's Spice of Life. Ben, describe your experience. What's happening hmm. to you right now? Is your life spicy? Oh my God! No, it's it's kind of. Uh, well, it's not your typical hot sauce, right? It's a little Asian influence, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's pretty good. Yeah. I'm not going to try it. You're not going to try it? Oh, man. All right, fine. I'll try I, it. I've <laughs> ar- <laughs> I have had it. I throw the it guacamole in. Guacamole cuts it. I think you can handle it. Well, yeah. I, I personally like I personally like it. You know, a little bit of guac on top. I personally mm-hmm. throw it in batters and marinades. Okay. Um, you know, fish. Anything I can anything I can think of recently. Okay. Oops. Wow. All right. Get a little no. generous. Yeah, do it. Hey. I, I do it up, man. Works for me. Make it happen. Oh, <laughs> now that's the sound of a chip. How does it taste? Delicious. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. There you go. Friend does a good job. So your friend is that's Gindo. That's really good. Yes. Highly recommended. Yeah. Damn. Gindo, Gindo makes a great sauce. It's, 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 in several, it's in several different restaurants here, especially okay. Kitchen Fair. You got yeah. It. God, if only, <laughs> if only there was something that uh, cool the heat. Oh, nuts. <laughs> only a little extra hot sauce. Just drink it straight from the bottle. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm just going to chug it. Forgo the chip. <laughs> I'm going to cool this off Woo. with a beer. Yeah. What's next, though? Well, next. The kind people that do pars. We tweeted out. We were looking for some free samples for this episode. The kind people at Dupar's brought us some pies. They did. We got blueberry and we got apple. Um, should we dig in? I think we should just dig in. Okay. Is there a specific sequence? Should we go alphabetical or? Yeah. Uh, which is apple. first, apple, apple or blueberry? I think. Apple. I think, yeah. I think apple would be. Apple. I'm not an expert. I'm not a <laughs> linguist. <laughs> is it opposite to Adam? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, hang on. My apple oh, sorry. I first. just straight into my blueberry. Should I do it anyway? I think you should do it, man. It, don't don't be it's afraid. It's, it's, just embrace it. Hmm. Well, the apple pie is better than I thought it was going to be, which is okay. sad because I think that I've mostly had shitty apple pie in my life. Because <laughs> I was like, oh, well, it's going to taste this way because that's how apple pie tastes. But right. Instead, it tastes better than that. You ever, you ever notice with that? Sometimes we get apple pies. There's a lot. There's a lot. The huge air pocket in there. Not a lot of apple. It's well, true. That's not what a lot happened of taste. here. Definitely, there was a giant dome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I, this is this is fairly stacked with apples. Well, no, the dome collapsed. I should tell you when it arrived. But, very domeful. Okay, when I yeah. got it, it, was stacked with apples, which is fantastic. It's a very proud, tall pie. <laughs> and now, uh, blueberry. Oh, blueberry. Yeah. Uh, which we should have done first because it comes first in the alphabet. But what? But whatever. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Creamy. I like, yeah, what is this? So what is this cream? Is it a custard sort of thing? I I, I enjoy this. It's not your it's standard fruit pie. Yeah, it's a butter oh. cream. Yeah, it's a really nice. It's fantastic. Uh, the apple is your standard apple pie. Uh, I would like to taste it warmer. Yeah. With some ice cream would be great. Or God, if we only had ice cream. Some ice cream might be good. Where can we get ice cream? In fact... Oh. Someone's been working on ice cream this whole time what? I've been here. You won't believe you it. You jest. Uh, no, I do not. In fact, uh, Lisa's going to join us for a new segment. <laughs> what piques Lisa's Pinterest? I'm going to keep eating this pie. Yeah. Well, that was a little yeah. dirty. <laughs> yeah. All right. 
Well, here's Lisa. The talk to us all about it. All right, I hope it's already. Jason, can we borrow a microphone? Sure. Thank you. And Lisa, right. here's a microphone for you. I'm going right. to mic you like this. <laughs> okay. So what right, do we so have So you originally here? found this where? Pinterest, right? Pinterest, yeah. just things to do when you're camping, outdoor activities, easy things to do. Right. And so how does it work? Well, first you add all your ingredients, your heavy cream, milk, vanilla. You add that to a small can. Okay. These then, are just coffee cans, oh, right? Oh, this is a small can cans. here. Okay, yeah. right. Here, so, can I clear you some space? This is freezing. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> I'll just throw everything down. Let's see. Let's unveil it. It's pretty, it's, it's, we can make this work. It's maybe got a little more to go. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it has a little more to go, but there's a lot of ice cream in there right there's now. There's a lot of ice cream. We can, can probably we just take that. Can let's I, let's sample yeah. the can ice cream. Can I try it? Let's make yeah, it happen. All right. we should scrape the sides. Spoon. Everybody get like one spoon for scraping. All right. Well, I'm going to, I need my. Are you going to scrape with the pie spoon? <laughs> no, take a clean one. <laughs> okay. Gross. Okay. Jeez, Ben. Oh, my God. You're going to get our podcast a C. <laughs> All right, scrape the sides of the can. Oh, that's ready for... Saucer. Yeah. No, I Ooh. mean, that's... Oh, that's no, some of this is actually firm. pretty firm. Well, like, yeah. farm-grown vegetables are better, you know, homegrown. Maybe ice cream's the same way, so... Wow, it is. Okay. Something unplanned happened. Oh. Uh -oh. Which is... Salt. The salt water. Oh, no, it did. No, no, no. It's really good. Yeah, it's yeah. great. It kind of cuts a little bit, right? <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Oh, man. Yeah. I'm not putting my double dip back in there. Yeah, we can't double dip. Let's yeah. keep shaking. because Yeah, yeah. Didn't we get a server spoon? We need a server spoon. Oh, I just ate with it. So we'll uh, get another one. All right, we'll get another server spoon. Can we revisit this later? Because it should... Yeah, we definitely need to revisit this later. All right. Yeah. All right. But, I'll, uh, get, I'll get okay. back to Okay. Oh, work. my God. Okay. Uh, I'm knocking things all over the place. Well... <laughs> Are you working on something for next time from Pinterest? Well, I've been doing some sprouting at home, which I learned on Pinterest. So you just take a mason jar, a little bit of water, and some lentils, and you can make your own sprouts at home. That's Lentil inside. sprouts? Lentil All right. sprouts. They've been delicious. So I'll uh, teach you guys how to make them, I guess, from Pinterest. Cool. Right. Thanks, All Lisa. Right. Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> okay. I think that takes us to our next segment. I think it's time for Yelp Counter Yelp. A script never comes alive until the table read. In this segment, we give voice to some of Yelp's finest prose. Ladies and gentlemen, we bring you Yelp Counter Yelp. First, Ben will be playing the part of Chris S. of Los Angeles, California, as a New York douchebag. Dupas equals foo bars. Can I get a little bit of tuna with my salt? Ugh! Salt overload. Even my pickle was salty. Normally, my pickle is sweet. Boom! And now, Top Story Weekly's Adam Campbell Schmidt portrays Rosa C. of Cheviot Hills, California. Hell's Ja, with a J. This place is all about the pancakes. Mmm, pancakes, pancakes, pancakes. I think they brush melted butter onto the pancakes, then bring them out to you. Yummy. They also have fresh squeezed orange juice. Oh, so good. Parking can be a bitch on weekends due to the whole farmer's market scene. <laughs> they were closed for remodeling for several months, maybe a year. I was trying to take a friend of mine here for all this time, and she ended up thinking that I was making up these stories of fabulous pancakes. They finally reopened when she moved out of SoCal. Ha! And that about does it for today's show. All right, so where can people find you, Jason? You can find me on the web at weekendfoodie.com or on Facebook at the, ori the Original Weekend Foodie. Okay. The, not the. The. Okay. All right. Good. <laughs> um, Thank you for the clap. After yeah. all that beer and pie, I can slur. Okay. <laughs> On Twitter? <laughs> On Twitter, Weekend Foodie. All right. Cool. Also, thank you to farmscapegardens.com for coming by with those awesome tomatoes. Man. Everybody? Tomatoes they were fantastic. super good. Really good. Am I the only one that also thought the cucumbers were like My kind of the star of the show? They were, I didn't think they were the star of the show, they were but good. they were really good. They, they were, were good. good. They were good. Yeah. They cleanse my palate well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for listening to LA Foodie. Find links to everything you heard on today's show at LAFoodie.com. Join us on Twitter or send us an old-fashioned email at podcast at LAFoodie.com. As always, I'm Drew Hubbard. And I'm Ben Waters. And as Facebook fan Jason Weiss says every time he sees the 100% ground bacon burger at Slater's, sweet Jesus. Jesus. <laughs>